Hello, everyone. Um, today's date is February 5th, 2022. Uh, this is the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation simulation. We're having a simulation today with Richard Falk. We are proposing a, the creation of a common government for the people of Israel and Palestine based on true democracy based on a democracy for the people of Israel, the West Bank and Gaza, which includes 14 million people. The only democracy in that area and the only legitimate democracy because the government of Israel and the Palestinian governments are not legitimate democracies in that area because they are not elected by the entire population, in my view. We are proposing a separate and independent government that would be in competition with the Israeli and the Palestinian government that will be separate and apart from that government. We are not proposing the dismantling of the Israeli or the Palestinian government, but the creation of a, another, a third government for uh, all of the people based on democracy, based on secular principles, separation between religion and government, and separation between the legislative, the executive, and the judicial branch. My name is Joseph Avasar. My email is josephavasar at gmail.com. And, and our uh, website is ipconfederation.org. You can go to that website and read the constitution. It's in three languages, Arabic, English, and Hebrew. It describes the how this common government will be created and what is the structure of that common government as a secular democracy for the people of Israel and Palestine. You can also go to the frequently asked questions to read a lot more uh, or, or to have a different perspective of an understanding of what we are proposing. Uh, many of our recordings are already available online and on our website, and many questions that you have have already been answered. You can uh, watch those simulations that we had with many people and, and, and listen to um, answers and comments that were made by many people in the past. Today, we have Professor Richard Falk. Richard Falk taught International Law at Princeton, Ohio State, UC Santa Barbara, and Queen Mary University, London. He is a former UN Special Rapporteur on Palestinian Human Rights and has writ writ written extensively on international law, human rights, and global justice. He is currently a research fellow at the Orphalia Center for Global and International Studies at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Professor Walk, uh, uh, Falk, I'm sorry, recommended that the UN request the International Court of Justice, ICJ, to investigate Israel's adherence to international standards on occupied Palestinian territories. He argued that the ICJ should be asked to consider le the legitimacy of Israel's occupation of the Palestinian territories, its settlement policies, and its blockade of Gaza. In, two in late 2008, Professor Falk was denied entry to Israel on grounds of alleged bias while acting as UN representative. Earlier in the same year, he was granted entry to Israel to take part in a conference, provided he refrains from any activity related to his UN position. In 2012, he was able to visit Gaza as UN representative with the permission of the Egyptian government. In 2021, he published a memoir entitled Public Intellectual, The Life of a Citizen Pilgrim 
which reflects his personal views about world citizenship as an aspiration rather than reality. We are inviting people with many points of views, pro-Israelis, pro-Palestinians, pro-peace, um, wh whoever has some ability uh, to speak about the subject. Our next speaker will be Professor Doron Navot from Israel. He will be uh, speaking on February 19, 2023. The next one will be um, Rabbi Neil Kamish Daniels and Gilly Getz, who is a photojournalist with Combatants for Peace. That would be on March 5th, 2023. Subsequently, on March 19, 2023, we will have Professor Igal Benun, who is a Israeli professor from Moroccan descent, and he um, teaches about um, many issues involving uh, uh, relating to Arab and um, and Jews from uh, Jews from Arab countries, in, including Morocco. On April 2nd, we will have Dr. Yila Livnat Ranan, who is Israeli, and Attorney Hanan Alsana, who are uh, specialists on Israeli and Arab internal politics. We had many, many speakers before. Like I said, we invite people with all, sort, all points of views to examine our um, formula for peace based on a common secular government independent of the Israeli and the Palestinian governments. We estimate the simulation to last 120 minutes. This is a simulation, it's not a speech. Professor Falk graciously agreed to participate in the simulation. Um, so we estimate it to last 120 minutes. After the 120 minutes, um, people could remain uh, and we will have um, uh, someone take over and, and, and speak to uh, the audience and have views being changed, exchanged. We will have several segments in this simulations. And we will have each segment, we will ask Professor Falk to opine on that segment. And then we will have a conversation with Professor Falk. And then we'll have a question and answer with, this, with Professor Falk and closing remarks that will be followed uh, up by five minute instructions. So let me uh, uh, show you a video that explains what the IPC is all about. And that this is a two minute video. The conflict between Israelis and Palestinians has endured for generations. And instead of time healing the wounds, it's only caused the anger to fester and the violence to grow. But what if there was a way to alleviate the tension? Something that may not outright solve every problem, but at least create a forum that encourages a peaceful compromise. Welcome to the Israeli-Palestinian Confederation, a common third government between the Israeli and Palestinian citizens, specifically designed to foster peace, tolerance, and economic prosperity between the two nations. Here's how it works. First off, both Israel and Palestine will keep their respective governments. Israelis Knesset and the Palestinian National Authority will remain unchanged. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation, IPC, will be a third entity acting as a unifying agent between the two. The IPC will comprise 300 parliament members elected from 300 districts in Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. Above them will preside a president and vice president, one Israeli and one Palestinian. In order for the IPC to pass a law, it will require a 55% majority from its Israeli representatives, as well as a 55% majority from its Palestinian representatives, thereby preventing either side from monopolizing the legislature. Of course, the IPC won't undermine the political power of either the Israeli or the Palestinian government. At any time, Israel or Palestine may veto a law passed by the IPC. If neither side vetoes, the law is passed and the two nations are another step closer to resolution. 
please help us make this a reality. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation. We might speak different languages, but we all mean the same thing. So in each simulation, we take a pre-simulation survey to ask you, the audience, including Professor Falk, you can vote as well. Please vote now. Do you agree with creating a common government for the people of Israel and Palestine? Yes or no, right now, to please vote. And then we will conduct another survey at the end of the simulation. Can we give it? Okay. Uh, can you seven? Uh, can you end the voting and publish the results? So the answer is twenty-four. Let, let me just write it: twenty-six out of thirty-four. Yeah, yes. And. Eight out of 34 voted no, which is 24% voted no, and 76% voted yes. Um, I'm sure we'll have more people and um, as, a, but, um, as we go along, and we'll see if we were able to change uh, some minds during the simulation. Our objective is to show how a common government could make peace. We are not anti-Israel or anti-Palestinian. Professor Falk is not a representative of the IPC. He was gracious enough to come to um, speak to us and to stress test our formula. We follow our own narrative. We expect that when we when this common government will be created, it will follow its own narrative. It's not going to be pro-Israel or pro-Palestinian. It's not going to have Israel's narrative or Palestinian's narrative. It will have a global narrative for the whole people in Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. We expect to have a rigorous discussion. We do not preclude other formulas for peace. We encourage others formulas for peace, and we are not claiming exclusivity. We will ask Professor Falk to judge our peace plan, our formula, based on these criteria. Is the IPC plan implementable? Is there a downside for either side to have a common government? And could it make peace? We will ask Professor Falk to judge this plan not based on perfection, but based on the alternative, because no one can come up with a perfect uh, formula. And perfection is the enemy of good. So we will ask uh, Professor Falk to judge it based on the alternative. We, the simulation expectations are we will have we will propose legislation and a constitution. We have the long constitution on our website. We will show a short version of the constitution. What we will be showing you is the tip of the iceberg. In other words, we can show a lot more uh, uh, legislation that this common government could pass with the consent of the Israeli and the Palestinian government. Quite frankly, the, the most uh, um, common um, objection to the common government is people say, well, the Israeli government and the Palestinian government will veto everything. And that's what we are trying to show that they will not be able to, to veto everything. We ask you to look at the big picture and avoid technical arguments. Um, we, are, we are limited by time and we cannot get into technicalities. We ask you to refrain from comments with the exception of Professor Falk. We ask you to refrain from comments, but we are actually encouraging you to ask questions. So if you have comments such as this is unrealistic, Israel will never allow that to happen, please put that on the chat or wait until the end. But you can ask questions. 
uh, substantive question. Isn't it better to have two state first? Would one state make more sense? Is it realistic to separate religion from government in the Middle East? Is this proposal to dismantle the Jewish state? What gives this government legitimacy? What, Israel, what would Israel allow this to happen? Is there a precedent for this, et cetera? We are conducting a simulation. This is not a speech. So in order to conduct the simulations, we have to agree on certain facts, that the Israeli prime minister represents Israelis only, that the Palestinian leader represent Palestinian only. But in the simulation, we will ask you to accept certain assumptions. And that's critical that you should, you, we're asking you to assume that we just completed online election for the people of Israel, the West Bank and Gaza, 14 million people, meaning an election on the internet, that 5 million people voted. We want you to assume that 5 million people voted the 3 million Palestinian voted and 2 million Israeli voted. We want you to assume that the president received one and a half million votes and the vice president received 1.3 million votes and they will rotate in two years. So I want you to assume that I, Joseph, was elected as president so that it is clear, I never intend to run as president. I am not even qualified under the constitution, but it makes it easier for me to conduct this simulation when, when we are assuming that I am the president. We also want you to assume that 300 parliament members were elected. And I will ask all of you to participate as parliament members. Each parliament member represents 47,000 people. So this is a simulation. You will all be parliament members. I will ask you to be parliament members, either Israeli or Palestinian, and you represent 47,000 people. Why 47,000? Because if you divide 14 million by 300, you'll get 47,000. So my, my, do you have any questions about those assumptions? This is a time to speak. Are you willing to accept those assumptions? If not, why not? Could I hear any, please speak up because I don't really, I, I only see Professor Falk. Um, uh, uh, Professor Falk, do you have any questions or are you unwilling to accept those assumptions? Uh, I do have a certain reservation, let me put it that way, about these assumptions, because I think they overlook the uh, inequality between the two sides, not in the simulation, but in the real circumstances. And yet the simulation is projects a image of equality. For instance, in this short video that you uh, showed us, the two sides ha are equally tall. And, and uh, that seems to me to create a uh, totally unrealistic sense of what Israel would tolerate or what Palestinians have any reason to anticipate in the future. So I don't, my uh, concern is that the preconditions for the establishment of this kind of con confederal government uh, does not yet exist. Could you be more specific? Because the precondition is the election the existence of the population and uh, 300 districts. So but, but there's the acceptance of uh, the, the Israeli government and the Palestinian Authority as currently constituted. The Israeli government is currently constituted by virtue of its own basic law uh, proclaims the supremacy of the Jewish people as having 
an exclusive right of self-determination. Uh, so, and when one accepts that as legitimate, uh, 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 because you're not questioning the legitimacy of the Israeli government, I won't even mention the findings by human rights organizations of violations of the international uh, criminal prohibition of apartheid in the relation to the Palestinian people and in the occupied territories. So uh, I just feel that without some connection with the real situation that confronts the two sides and represents their uh, aspirations at this stage, one gets something of a false picture. That's my concern. I, I don't question at all the motivation or uh, the uh, degree to which, if the preconditions were satisfied, this would be a constructive way to implement a vision of sustainable peace between the two peoples. All right, I, I just want to respond. Um, it's true that we are not accepting or rejecting the legitimacy of the government of Israel or the Palestinian, but we are really, we claim that we are the only legitimate government in that area because we are elected by all the people in there, but we are not accepting the legitimacy of the state of Israel or the government of Israel, we are accepting or recognizing is the, the, the right terminology. We're recognizing their power and we are dealing with their power versus their legitimacy. But when you recognize their power, and you take account of the recent elections and what those uh, what the behavior flowing from the new government already suggests, uh, it re it portrays something so far away from the imagery of the simulation as to be a bit misleading. What can this simulation do to make peace come any closer when you have this kind of leadership in Israel projecting a uh, worsening of the realities that one is trying to uh, uh, create and uh, on behalf of a just and sustainable future for both peoples okay the the but you do accept the that conducting the the election is really a technical issue you're not you're not questioning the the uh, our ability to technically conduct a a an election the technical aspect well i'm not questioning the technical end of it but i'm questioning whether the political implications of conducting such an election create a misleading sense that there is a freedom to influence the present situation that, uh, in my view, doesn't exist. That's what, that's what I mean by the preconditions for this sort of simulation are not satisfied uh, in my judgment. Okay, we are saying that if 5 million people vote, that would create a huge political structure, political power that will influence the Israeli and the Palestinian and the whole world. But I, I think we can speak about that forever uh, yeah. on those issues. All right, so let me, does anyone else have any questions about those assumptions? So hearing no questions. Yes, I, I do, Barry yes. Weiss. Uh, hi, Barry. Hi. 
I completely agree with uh, Professor Falk. Um, I do not see uh, your Thank effort you. uh, as questions. Needed. Questions, please. Uh, Mary, we I'm going to hang you. up after this. You don't have to worry about it. I do not believe that your proposals will lead to any uh, constructive solution. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we believe that the assumptions are achievable with relatively small financial commitment. I want to remind you that there is a, on a daily, whenever there is a war between Israel and Gaza, one day of war is a hundred million dollars with the um, iron dome and with all the missiles and is over a hundred million dollars. A hundred million dollars could make these elections a possibilities, a possibility. Okay, we are asking now people to volunteer to act as either Israeli or Palestinian parliament members and also to act as Prime Minister of Israel, Hamas leader, and um, PA leader. Do, do I have someone for Israeli Prime Minister? Sure, it's Len. Hi, Len, okay. Do I have someone for um, Hamas leader? Hamas leader. I need a Hamas leader. I don't know why we always get difficulty on that part, but I need a I need a volunteer on Hamas leader. Okay, I will be. Oh, Shlomo, terrific. And I need a PA leader. Oh, it was uh, Judith? You raised your hand. I see. Are you Judith? You want you're willing to be a PA leader? Sure. Okay, terrific. Judith Paulson. Okay. The rest of you, I will ask you to be either Israeli or Palestinian parliament member. By the way, if you are a Hamas leader or Israeli leader or PA leader, you cannot be a parliament member. These are separate governments. You cannot vote. You can only you only have the right to veto but you cannot vote. So this is the map of the area. We will ask some of you to be Palestinian parliament members and some of you to be Israeli parliament members, choosing your district, choosing your city. Some of you would be both uh, in, in an in a area that is both Israeli and Palestinian together. So let's take a sample vote. Uh, Palestinian parliament members, just say yes so we know how many we have, Palestinian yeah. parliament members. <clears throat> okay. Okay, we have 16 Palestinian parliament members. And let's have the Israeli vote so we know how many Israeli parliament members. And I may ask you if when it gets to the to the right time, I may ask you what city you represent uh, if there is a question. Okay. Uh, can you explain what the legislation is again? I mean, I know the groups of the legislators, but what is the legislation that you're asking us to vote on? You will see it. It's, com it's coming up. We're first going to vote for a on a constitution, and then we're going to go on suggested legislation that I am the president I am voting on. I'm, I'm so, the so what you're voting on now is if you agree with the current government? No, what you are voting on now is that you are willing to pretend to be either Israeli or Palestinian parliament members. Oh. Okay, so we have, you, we just want to know how many we have. So we have nine Israeli parliament members and we have 16. We haven't voted yet. We just identified ourselves. Okay, let's go on.
And now, uh, Ruth, is, we're answering your question, your first question. We are passing a constitution. We want the parliament members to vote. So Libby, could you please read out the constitution? Libby? Okay, I'll, I'll read All right. it. Okay, we believe that Palestinians and Israelis are entitled to equal rights under the law and guaranteed human rights and freedom. The Israeli-Palestinian Confederation does not intend to supersede or supplant the Palestinian or Israeli governments, nor to abrogate or undermine any agreements between those governments. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a scratchy throat. We recognize the need to work with the Israeli and Palestinian governments. Our purpose is to resolve conflicts and to expand Sorry. Uh, the relationship between Palestinians and Israelis in a fair and equitable manner. We believe in equal rights under the law, guaranteed human rights and freedom for all. We voluntarily give the legislatures and the governments of Israel and Palestine veto power over legislation we pass relating to the domain of control of those governments. <clears throat> we believe in the separation of power between the legislative, executive, and judicial branches. We believe in the creation of a permanent secular government for all the people residing in Israel and Palestine. We believe in having a separate judicial branch relating to IPC legislation with Israeli and Palestinian judges with a system to avoid biased decisions based on nationality. All right. So the main thing here is that we are a separate government. We give the we are not here to undermine the Israeli or Palestinian governments. We are not here to undermine any agreements between them. And once we pass legislation, we agree to give a veto power to the Israeli and the Palestinian governments relating to issues that affect their domain or control. So if it doesn't affect their domain or control, just like this constitution, they do not get a veto power. So Professor Falk, can we hear your comments before we take a, vo a vote to ratify the constitution? Uh, well, my my I think the there are many uh, good sentiments in these constitutional uh, provisions, uh, but again, I have trouble with the idea of not undermining uh, the Israeli government in particular because it's engaged in international criminal activity. And to sort of say that one is implicitly accepting uh, the Israeli government as it now functions, even though I realize that's not the intention of the Confederation or the simulation, it creates, to, in my mind, a false impression of a hopeful future for this kind of undertaking where I don't feel that the preconditions have been satisfied. And rather than generate hope, I think this will uh, reinforce cynicism about what the future will mean, especially for the Palestinian people. Okay, Professor Falk, I wanna go back to the to your bio. And in your bio, it says that you recommended forwarding the government of Israel to the international courts. It, it, doesn't that give the same cynicism? Doesn't that recognize the state of Israel uh, when you refer it to the international uh, criminal courts? It, it uh, recognizes the existence of Israel and its membership in the UN and its supposed accountability uh, to respect international law. 
I don't have any illusions that if the International Court of Justice found, as I think they would, that Israel is violating international law, I don't believe that would change Israel's uh, policies. In fact, the past suggests that Israel would repudiate such a finding and even it, uh, describe it as an expression of international anti-Semitism. And so, but where that kind of decision is important is that it would mobilize civil society, activism, and maybe some of the countries and the peoples in the region and in the global south generally. In other words, it would have a symbolic importance that exceeds what the fact that it would not change the behavior on the ground. And But here, I feel one's creating a misleading uh, set of uh, assumptions that uh, do uh, depart so radically from the uh, actual conditions and prospects of the two people that it's less uh, mobilizing and more uh, more likely to generate uh, cynicism. Yeah, but both your action, I, I'm not going to argue about that, but what's wrong with the people of Israel and Palestine saying, you know what, we are tired of these governments, we want to create a common government for us, and we are the only legitimate government, and we are conducting a, a, an election to legitimize our government. But we have no choice, just like you had no choice. You, you referred Israel to the international uh, uh, court or whatever, because you had to recognize its existence. So the same thing we are saying, we have, we have no choice. We recognize their power, but we want to be a legitimate government for the people of Israel and Palestine. I, I don't really see the, the Well, the, the difference is that the International Court of Justice is being asked to undermine that power, whereas this simulation, as I understand it, proceeds on the assumption that the two existing uh, governing authorities uh, deserve respect and have a veto power. Correct. Uh, well, you you also gave a veto power to Israel when you have, when when they expelled you from from Israel, and then you applied, and they get and you gave them a veto power. They actually told you you can come, but as long as you don't speak about your UN activity. You accepted their veto power over you. Well, I accepted that they could, in fact, admit me on their conditions, that that's part of international law, that they control who can enter uh, territory under their sovereign authority. But that, uh, and it was, I don't want to go into the details, but. Uh, the conference came before the uh, I was expelled, and so I didn't anticipate that they would actually expel me, and nor did the UN in Geneva think that I would be expelled because they wouldn't have encouraged me to make this long trip from California if if they thought the outcome was going to be as it turned out. I was not only expelled, but I was detained in an Israeli prison for uh, some 24 hours or maybe a little less than that. But it I'm was... sorry about that. I'm sorry to hear that. You, you, definitely, you don't deserve to be in prison. All right. Okay. Let's, take, let's take a vote, if you don't mind. Let's have the, the uh, parliament ratify uh, the Palestinian parliament members, please vote first. Do you ratify the constitution? Okay. okay. Um, 
let's end about 86% ratified. Uh, the two that did not ratify, they will have to be expelled from the parliament because you do not accept the constitution, just like in any other government in the world. If someone does not accept the constitution, he cannot serve in the government. So therefore you are not permitted to vote any because you did not accept uh, the constitution. So you are expelled from the parliament and you cannot, you cannot vote. Let's have the Israeli parliament members please vote. Israeli parliament members. Okay, publish the vote. Um, seven out of eight, 88% voted yes. The one who voted no, he's also expelled from the parliament because he did not accept the constitution. And uh, the person who got the second number of votes from your districts, either, either Israeli or Palestinians will become uh, parliament members, but the Israeli who voted no, the Palestinian who voted, the two Palestinians who voted no, they are expelled from the parliament. You cannot vote any longer on any parliament issues uh, because you are not, you are expelled, you have not accepted the constitution. All right, um, let's go to the first. Uh, so, Traditionally, we have some objections by the by the uh, speaker, um, and we are responding to those. Uh, the Israeli government or the Palestinian government will not have a a a, a the right or the reason to object to a common government. We believe that we can get the five million people because the Israelis and the Palestinians are not a monolithic society, and. They and the governments of Israel and Palestine do not have the legal right to object or the moral right to object, and they may lose legitimacy if they object and to the common government. And they never attempted to disrupt a common government. We had an election in 2012. We actually had the election. We actually advertised it on the New York Times. We had a full page ad in the New York Times on October 1st, 2012, we did not receive any objection from the Israeli or the Palestinian government. And we did have the election. Uh, some people voted very few. We did not have enough um, uh, advertising uh, budget to, to let the people of Israel and Palestine know. But the point is that neither the Israeli nor the Palestinian governments ever objected to this common government. All right, let's go to the first um uh voting uh legislation that we're going to be voting on and that's granting a veto power to the separate governments libby could you please read the the legislation uh somebody else is going to read because of my voice charles okay, i'll read it up charles uh, was, said he would do it who i would i would if you want oh, Joseph. okay charles please Granting a veto power to the separate governments. The Confederation is the government of the entire population of Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. We hereby bestow a veto power relating to legislation affecting sovereignty to the following. The government of Israel, the Palestinian Authority, Hamas. In the event of changes in governments, this legislation may be amended or repealed. Great. Does anyone have any questions, including um, you, Professor Falk, or uh, about this first legislation we are passing? Basically, we are saying we are the separate government, but we are giving a veto power to the government of Israel, Palestinian Authority, and Hamas. Uh, I would have uh, the following objection, that by giving a veto power to the government of Israel, you are freezing the situation as it now exists with respect to the domination and exploitation of the Palestinian people. And there's no prospect that Israel would not exercise its veto to the full extent that it needed to, 
to prevent any uh, change in its governing policies. Okay, so basically you are saying two different things. The one thing you're saying is that we are cementing the Israeli government. And the second thing you are saying is that in all likelihood, they will veto everything. Well, you're cementing the the capacity, the, you're cementing and legitimating the affirmation by the Israeli government of their currently unlawful and criminal policies. And that's unacceptable. And all of that by giving them a veto power over our own legislation? Yes, precisely. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Not comments, but questions. Professor Falk is entitled to, to state his comments, but any questions? We'll have questions at the end. Okay, two participants raise his hand, I see. Please ask your questions. I, I don't see your name, so ask your questions, please. Henry here. Uh, my question is, does this veto uh, that's given to both governments or th all three governments, does it give them the power to override legislation that has been passed by 55% of the Palestinian members of the IPC and 55% of the Israeli members of the IPC? Is that the intention of this veto? It, it gives them yes it gives them the right to veto that legislation yes that has been passed by a majority of the ipc correct so who is the who has primacy here the israeli and the palestinian governments are supreme not the not the common government got it okay thank you sure any other uh, questions yeah, hi. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. <clears throat> yeah, uh, uh, Stephen Gilchrist from the United Kingdom. Um, does the veto power relate to the PA and Hamas as presently constituted, who have both been in power for many, many years without any democratic elections at all, or does it anticipate that they will be properly elected on a democratic process in order to represent their respective constituencies. We are giving them a veto power as they are currently constituted. We do not, Thank it's you. not based on their future election. It's, it's today, whatever they are today. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Joseph, clarify. Clarify that the the uh, the veto is on this anything that affects their sovereignty. Correct. Yes. Uh, Mona, please ask the question. Mona Ali Khalid, ask the uh, question. Indeed. Uh, yeah. I mean, but uh, they will most likely abuse the privilege of defining what what affects their sovereignty in order to interfere, as as uh, Professor Fox is, is kindly concerned about. Um, could you amend the constitution? to allow, as you have in US law, the opportunity in the event of a veto by any of the parties of overriding the veto with a higher majority, like a 75% majority, for instance. So that the initial would be 55%, but if there's a veto by any of the three parties that the, that the confederation could override uh, where supreme interests are at stake, for instance, uh, with a 75% or such number that you deem appropriate. Yes, the constitution could be amended. However, I, I, I would highly recommend against it because the, that would give the Israeli, especially the Israeli government, the excuse to say that this entity is designed to destroy the government of Israel. If it, if it can override the uh, veto by the government of Israel, Israel will be able to use that as an excuse. Right now, what will motivate the Israelis to participate in this common government is that they have the assurances that the, their government can veto uh, legislation. And therefore, the idea of uh, dismantling the Jewish state is out of the question. 
Any other questions? Hearing no questions, let's, um, let's take a vote. Palestinian parliament members, please vote. Palestinian parliament members, please vote. Okay, we need more votes. Palestinian parliament members. Okay, um, can you publish the vote? Uh, eight out of eight, it's not all of the Palestinian. We have 16 Palestinian parliament members. In, in other words, we need, uh, uh, but right now eight out of eight voted yes in favor of this legislation. Um, uh, so that I think that's 55%. And let's have the Palis Israeli parliament members, please vote. Okay. Um, let's publish the vote. Okay, 50% of the Israeli parliament members voted yes, 50% voted no. Let's go to those Israeli parliament members who voted no. Um, could you please raise your hand, Israeli parliament members? Okay, uh, let's start with the first one. I don't see the name, so if you can just, uh, Let's have the number one, whoever it is, the name. Uh, uh, okay, uh, Clark, Clark Solicitor. I assume yeah, you're- Yeah, hi. Why, yeah, why yeah. Did you yeah, uh, uh, Clark, so this is- Okay, Clark, are you Israeli? Yeah, my, 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 name, my name is Stephen Gilchrist. Uh, uh, Stephen? Uh, I, I voted no because- Yeah, well, let me ask hi, you my this. Name is Before, you, from the United what Kingdom. area do you represent? What is I your... represent Israel. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, Herzliya. Herzliya. Oh, you voted, okay, yes, okay. And and why did you vote no? Okay. I voted no because you're equating, you're trying to equate a vote between a democratically elected government, whether you like the complexion of that government or you don't, a, de a de democratically elected government with an undemocratic autocracy which governs uh, the PA and Hamas, who have not been the subject of elections for many years. And regardless of whether they're treated as uh, gangsters or terrorists by, by other parts of the world, the fact is they are not a democratic representation of their constituents. That's why I voted no. Okay, do you realize that they control Gaza? Of course, Hamas control Gaza. Right? Okay. Of course, so, I understand so that. I, and, uh, I am. I am the president. I want to to give benefit. I want to help the people to my people, the people who voted for me in Gaza. Okay, I want to give them jobs. I want to give them uh, uh, seaport, airport. I want to do a lot of projects for Gaza. How am I going to be able to do that if Hamas does, is not included in the system. Well, the first thing to do is to ensure that you are representative of your constituents. That's to say that you properly represent the interests of those that you claim that you represent. And the way to do that I is to been hold elected. election and to be re-elected as, as the government in Gaza. I have been elected by 5 million people. I am the president of Israel, the West Bank and Gaza. And yeah. I am, I want to, to help my people in Gaza. So how am I going to be able to do that without getting Hamas's cooperation? You, you were elected what, how, 16 years ago, was it? When was the last election? No, and... I was just elected. The election was done today. We finished today. I am, oh, okay. I am not a Hamas leader. I am the, the leader of the the area of Israel, the West Bank, and Gaza. I have been elected by 5 million people. Were you there? Sorry, I, yeah. I, 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 sorry, I, mis I misunderstood the question. Okay. Um, I understand that your good intentions, and I think we all understand the good intentions of this, but 
We're not speaking about my intention. If you're going to give a veto, if you're going to give a veto, how am I going to help to... the people in Gaza? If you're going to give a veto to a government, a purported government in Gaza, then you have to be, you have to ensure, don't you, that that, that government in Gaza represents the genuine concerns of the constituencies in Gaza. Now, <sighs> since Hamas were last uh, elected, Hamas were last elected, there have been a number of wars in which Gaza have attacked, uh, sure, Hamas has attacked sure. Israel. We, we already know that Hamas is a failed government. We, right. we, we give them that, okay? We're, and the, you want to give it a we're visa? Not, we're not the Israeli government. We are the government of the people of Israel and Palestine. I want to benefit my people, the people who voted for me. We have 300 parliament members. We have 50 of them from Gaza. We have people voted for the common government in Gaza. I want to give the people in Gaza the way a, 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 a airport, a seaport under our common government. How am I going to do that if I don't get the cooperation of Hamas? Uh, absolutely. Well, the, the answer is that you need, as the new president of this third uh, overarching body, to put pressure on both Hamas and the PA to ensure that they genuinely reflect the uh, current political situation in the areas which they control. In other words, I that they hold it. I agree with you. I, I want to put pressure government. on them. I want to put pressure on them, but I want to get their cooperation too. Just pressure is not going to do any good. Well, let's, if you let's accept go to the... another another parliament member who voted against, please. Okay. What area do you represent? Those who voted against. And other parliament members who voted against, please. Okay, let's I, try. I to... voted against. Okay, Israel Aharoni, what area do you represent? Is, I'm, I'm an Israeli. What city do you represent? You are a parliament member. What Tel city? Aviv. What city do you represent? Tel Aviv. You represent Tel Aviv. Did you vote in favor of the constitution? I think I made a mistake when I voted. I voted incorrectly. <laughs> Are you ratifying the constitution? Yes. Okay. So you except, want- so, Except I had so, a problem with the veto. What is your, okay. How do that's you why, want- That's to, why I voted uh, negative. You voted against the constitution? Yes, I think because of the veto. Okay, so you are not allowed to vote now. Just because of one uh, aspect yeah, of the Constitution? Yeah, because you did not accept the Constitution. Okay. You are not allowed to vote. All right, so let's take another vote. Those who, who voted against the Constitution cannot vote. Oh, okay. Let's have the, the vote again. So you, so you mean that Americans that don't agree with the Constitution? You cannot, cannot serve in the American, American, American Congress if you do not swear allegiance to the American Constitution. I don't think so. Well, <laughs> I don't think so. As long as you are a law abiding citizen. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now we have uh, this veto power passed by 100% of the Israeli parliament members. And let's go to Professor Falk for comments. Oh, we already did have comments on that. Okay, let's go to the next constitution. Joint economic zone. Joint. Uh, Charles, please read. Okay, joint economic zone. A joint economic zone, JEZ, between Israel and Gaza. Exclusive, under exclusive IPC management and control. A common economy, education, industry, agriculture, sewage treatment, desalination plant, solar farm, wind power, and green energy, international airport and seaport, equally accessible to Israelis and Palestinians. We hereby submit this legislation to the Israeli government, the Palestinian government, and Hamas. We bestow upon them a veto power, which may be exercised in the next 60 days. All right. Does anyone have any questions regarding this? Does anyone have any questions regarding this comment, uh, this legislation? 
Can I have a question? I know I can't vote, but can I have a question? Sure, sure, go ahead. Will Israel not veto it? We are. We haven't gotten to that part. Yes, you are. The, qu must, uh, the question is, do you have a question about this legislation? Yeah, I'm asking a question. Do you, the panel think, or the voters, that Israel will not be sir, sir, you need to ask a question about the legislation. Does anyone have a question about the legislation? Professor Falk, do you have any questions or comment about the, the legislation? Uh, only that I would, uh, I'm surprised that the, a condition of lifting the blockade on Gaza isn't included in, uh, in the proposal of a joint economic zone, because it's hard to imagine uh, such a zone uh, unless the blockade that's been in existence since 2007 is completely uh, lifted and normal relations are permitted. Well, we do not exclude that possibility, but we are saying... Well, we... but that that's linked totally to the exercise of the veto. Without that possibility, it's 110% sure that Israel would veto. So there's no point in making this kind of proposal unless it's coupled uh, with some degree of normalization between Israel and uh, Gaza as a precondition. All right. Uh, let's do, are there any other questions? Yeah, Joseph, questions? I had my hand up. Yeah, Jay John. Question, question, not comment. Uh, the question is on item two of exclusive IPC management and control. Uh, if I could offer an amendment, I would make an amendment. However, the point is uh, that neither side is going to want to uh, eliminate uh, their uh, concerns of security concerns. On Jay, Jay, please ask questions, not comments. Can I make an uh, amendment to the second line? Okay, that's a good question. All right, let's take a vote. Palestinian. You're not Palestinian. answering my question. I, 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 it's not a question. We'll see if it passes. If it doesn't pass, we'll we'll deal with your amendment. Okay. <laughs> let's see. And I have to. Okay, this is for the uh, Palestinian. Pro Palestinian parliament amendments. Do you support a joint economic zone? A question. Okay. Uh, publish the vote. Ninety percent voted yes. Okay, uh, Henry. What is your question? Uh, my question is: um, Would a joint? Is it possible that a joint economic zone that is equally accessible to Israeli and Palestinians could be conceived? Could be perceived by the. Hamas government or by the Israeli government as not affecting their sovereignty. In other words, wouldn't it inevitably, certainly uh, be perceived by both of them as being a restriction on their sovereignty? You're right. right. And we're question. giving them a veto power. I see. Okay. Let's have the Palestinian. So I think. 80% of the Palestinians voted yes, I think. 90, I think. What, how many? 90? Yeah, it was 90-10. 90-10. The Palestinian, okay. now the Israelis. Yeah. Okay, let's have the Israeli parliament members. <coughs> uh, okay. Publish the vote. A hundred percent of the Israeli parliament members voted yes. Let's go to the Israeli prime minister. Mr. Prime Minister, are you going to veto this legislation? Yes. And and um, uh, if we if we amend the legislation to instead of exclusive to um, mutual control with. <laughs> the Israeli and the Palestinian and Hamas government, will you 
accept that legislation? No, I, Israel is a massive industrial country. It is the world leader in agriculture. So Sir, this is, this is not an opportunity to I am, I am, a, a PR I am, for Israel. Okay? I'm not. Uh, what I'm saying is you have put down all of Israel's strengths and you're asking for exclusive IP management. First of all, yeah, I, agree, I, you, yeah, I, it, agree, I agree with the concept of a joint economic zone. But the, the management and control of it will be decided by the parties that are doing the building, not the IPC. You're, well, you're a government, you, okay. are not, you are not a building management company. Okay, so will you agree to have, that's what I asked you because we had a Israeli parliament member who, amend, who, who, who suggested an amendment. Would you accept that amendment? What is the amendment? Jay, could you please state your amendment? I use the word mutual, which satisfies, as far as I'm concerned, mutual uh, management and control, meaning uh, in my mind that both parties would have security, uh, <clears throat> secu security uh, uh, confidence that there will not be any manipulations, but mutual management and control gives each or nothing will happen if both don't agree. So a mutual management and control makes the sense to me and protects both sides. That's why I would urge uh, the Prime Minister of Israel to accept it. I, I, would, I would buy that. Okay. Let's go to the Hamas leader. Mr. Hamas leader, are you accepting the, the joint economic zone as was amended by the, um, was just amended? Mutual control, not, I, not exclusive control. For the IPC. Yes. Okay. Yes. And what about the uh, uh, Palestinian Authority leader? Would you accept a mutual a, a joint economic zone with mutual control? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Terrific. So let's go to um, the, uh, the can, next can I, can legislation. Joseph, I'd like we, to ask we have we have uh, business to do. We have a lot of legislation. Uh, can I have right sixty up. seconds? Okay. I'm sorry. 60 seconds. I want to ask a question. I am, a, I am for a joint economic zone. I am against the last three lines. Okay, but you've been expelled from the parliament. Yeah, but this is not. A but, joint it doesn't matter zone. what you want. When you, 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 when are, you, you, are, the... you are a regular citizen. Okay, uh, thanks. Okay. Common police force. Uh, proposing common police force. Um, uh, Charles, could you please read that? <clears throat> Common police force, equal number of Israeli and Palestinians at each level, distinct uniforms for the common police force different from the Israeli or Palestinian police force, independent of the Israeli and Palestinian security forces, in cooperation with the separate Israeli and Palestinian authorities, address sensitive religious, cultural, and language requirements, facilitate the operation of the joint economic zones, investigate corruption by administrators who refuse to teach tolerance, investigate allegations of intolerance and racist hate crime against Israelis or Palestinians, assist in managing checkpoints, guard the parliament building and threats against members of the confederation, facilitate access to and safety of religious facilities. We hereby submit this legislation to the Israeli government, the Palestinian government and Hamas, who bestow upon them a veto power which may be exercised in the next 60 days. All right, Professor Falk, do you have any comments or question regarding this common police force legislation? Uh, uh, not really, if you uh, accept uh, my prior, I mean, uh, uh, trying to bring to bear my <clears throat> prior concerns, uh, if one puts them aside, I think this is uh, an acceptable way of constituting a common police force, which could play a, a useful role. Uh, the only other thing I would uh, say is 
uh, that it's hard to imagine that this would not lead to a Israeli veto and therefore not become operative legislation. Okay, don't don't put ideas in their head. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's. Uh, any other questions? Okay, let's have the. Palestinian... I have a question. My hand is up. Uh, Henry. Okay, Henry, I'm sorry, I didn't. Sorry. Think it. Yeah. So one of the uh, one of the points here is assistant managing t checkpoints. <laughs> In Canada, we don't have checkpoints. In the United States, we don't have checkpoints. In England, we don't have checkpoints. What what do you would envision as being the purpose of checkpoints? We are we 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 do not support checkpoints. Uh huh. Like I said at the beginning, perfection is the enemy of good. I'm asking. You're a, part of the goal of the of this common police force this uh, confederal police force is to assist in managing checkpoints. Correct. What checkpoints are you envisioning? The checkpoints exist. Currently. But that means that the occupation will continue. Uh -huh. Checkpoints are an incident of the occupation. All right. So you basically I, saying- My follow-up question, my follow-up question is, and, and as I, th I think, uh, Richard has pointed out. So would they also assist with the IPC common police force also assist in maintaining the um, Israeli Navy blockades of Gaza, which is also a kind of a checkpoint. So is that is that what you're saying? It would assist in managing the presently existing checkpoints set up by Hamas in Gaza and set up by Israel in Israel and the West Bank. This is really a technical issue. Oh, is it? Okay. It, no, it, 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 you're asking about the location of the checkpoints. We the, are, I, no, I asked about the purpose of the checkpoint. No, I think it would be clearer if one said managing checkpoints, border control, and uh, blockade, existing blockade. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fine. All right, let's have... Um, Look, it's very easy to um, question the uh, the legislation that is being proposed based on the standard of perfection. I agree with you. This is not a per perfect, but unless you come up with an alternative, this is the the what we suggested at the beginning. We asked, please consider what is being uh, presented to you, not based on perfection, but based on what's in the alternative. But, the, but these uh, issues that have been raised about the checkpoints are matters of clarification. Yeah, they don't... I agree. I agree. And we are, yeah, these are, yes, absolutely. Okay, let's have the uh, uh, Palestinian parliament members please vote. Palestinian parliament members. Okay. Um, published the results. 100% of the Palestinian parliament members voted in favor of this legislation. Let's go to the um, Israeli parliament members. Please vote. More Israeli parliament members, please vote. We need to move forward. Okay, pub publish the results. 100% of the Israeli parliament members. Let's go to the Hamas leader. Mr. Hamas leader, are you in favor of this legislation? Do you support this legislation? Yes. Let's go to the PA parliament member, a uh, PA President, are you veto are you vetoing this legislation? The PA. No, uh, no, no. Let's go to the uh, Israeli Prime Minister. Are you going to veto this legislation? Yes. Are there any changes that we can make that will um, satisfy your requirements? 
I don't know what the investigate corruption by administrators to reduce the free teach tolerance. That's just, that just the opening a bag of worms. Uh, certainly in managing checkpoints, nobody is going to be there. The checkpoints are in, uh, the checkpoints are there to control Palestinian terrorism. And uh, as the uh, blockade of Gaza has been brought up, it's a blockade by both Egypt and Gaza. And uh, at the time of the uh, Mara Mara incident, the United Nations put out a report saying that it was legal and necessary for a military blockade against Hamas. So there's no way that a common police force is gonna be going off to Gaza. Okay, it says in cooperation with the separate Israeli and Palestinian authorities. No, it, it, no. So, so I, you, are, you are flat against the common police force. Uh, I, I don't see what they have much function to do. But certainly not managing, certainly not investigating corruption. Police forces don't. Police forces are there to to to. Uh, are there is there the any crime. way is there any way we can amend this legislation to to prevent you from vetoing the legislation? I don't know what you have to do with safety of religious facilities, for example. Well, the religious religious facilities of all of all uh, religions are the responsibility of the religious authority. Well, Mr. Prime Minister, in the last many, many years, the areas of Al-Aqsa Mosque and, 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 and uh, uh, Christian, uh, 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 the Church of the Nativity and the uh, Western Wall have all been under tremendous amount of uh, violence. Why? You, why, you are why? Not, you are not able to control the violence in no, those areas. Uh, the you were not. The... You were not able to give. Uh, you saw your your uh, uh, minister uh, uh, Gavir. He, he showed up. Elect, to... He just got elected a week ago. Don't blame me for what's going on. Give, yeah, give me... I'm not blaming you. I'm blaming no, but you I mean, it your just inability. Happened. You are unable to give peace to the and security to the Muslim people, to the Jewish people, and the Christian people to use their uh, religious facilities in Jerusalem. In what, the, what, what has, where, where has Israel stopped the Christians? It was the PLO. I'm not that, saying that took I'm over, saying, that I'm took over the you, church. It, I'm not saying you caused it. I'm saying you failed to stop it. Well, you're not, if, if Israel can't do it, you can't do it. Well, what is, what is who, has, who has stopped any any Muslim from going to okay. any mosque? All right. So, so, Mr. Prime Minister, I'm going to tell you that unless you agree to some sort of an amendment for a common police force, I'm going to work hard. Oh, to, it doesn't matter. I'm going to work hard in, <laughs> within the people of Israel to demonstrate to them that you are not a person of peace. I'm going to work hard internationally to show that there is a reasonable. We have an accept a, a legislation that has been accepted by Hamas, by the PA, and you're the only one refusing to accept it. All right, I think that we we understood how the this world the world accept the the the. You I just want to say a question. The Looks democratic like world. Okay, Sean, hand go ahead, because we need to move on. Okay, um, when you said about common police force and joint economic, you know. Um, is this only uh, applies to the to the you know the borders between Israel and Gaza, right? That, that the common police force will only be in the joint economic between Israel and Gaza. That you'll only find the common police force between uh, the two. Uh, what is your question, Sean? I'm saying, would it be uh, is 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 the common police force will only be in the buffer zone between uh, Israel and Gaza? That you'll only find the common police no, force between no, the we, joint. No, this is this is the legislation. We have many many legislations relating to Kalandia. To uh, here, here is another one coming up. Uh, okay, maybe they don't approve. Okay, it. maybe they want. Okay, okay. okay. here is the next one. Uh, West Bank Mediterranean Transportation. Wait, wait. I, w I had my hand up, Joseph. Okay. Uh, tried a Montcalm police force in an effort to acquire the support of the Prime Minister of Israel. We should uh, remove the uh, sensitive religious, cultural, and make that a, a separate category. 
that deals with that subject separately, but not as part of the common police force. Therefore, the prime minister of Israel could support this, knowing that it would not be covering religious, it would be otherwise covered somewhere else. Okay, Mr. Prime Minister, are you willing to accept that amendment? You're muted, Lynn. Uh, I would have to take out facilities about religious facilities because I believe they'll belong to religion and other police, uh, unless, unless they are being attacked. Of course, in which case, I expect all forces to come in, both the Palestinian and the Israeli, and uh, certainly checkpoints are not going to be, uh, I'm not giving up control of any checkpoints. All right, look, the, the purpose is not to convince Len. The purpose is to demonstrate how this thing could work. Let's go okay. to the next next um, uh, legislation, and that is, uh, 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 Charles, could you read the next legislation? West Bank Mediterranean Transportation. Given the substantial number of young people and adults in the West Bank never experienced, who have never experienced the joy of spending time at a beach near an ocean or sea, the president is proposing the following legislation. The IPC will arrange daily round trip public transportation from various parts of the West Bank to different beaches in the Mediterranean Sea. Palestinians and Israelis who wish to participate must adhere to security members prescribed by the Palestinian and Israeli authorities. We hereby submit this legislation to the Israeli government, the Palestinian government and Hamas. We bestow upon them a veto power which may be exercised in the next 60 days. Does anyone have any questions regarding this legislation? Right here. Professor Falk? No, it seems okay to me. Okay. Uh, Henry, Henry? Hen Henry had a... Yeah, so if there's, if there's freedom of movement within the entire territory... Do you have any question? Yes. What is the is, question? Is this... Is this... Uh, the implementation of a lack of freedom of movement within the territory. I don't know. I don't understand okay. your question. Okay. But... So, so that's why that's why one sentence as a preamble would be helpful to help you understand. Okay. If the constitution allows for freedom of movement, a person from Ramallah and Nablus can go to the beach, hang out on the beach, and go home freely. That would be freedom of movement, like we have in Canada and the United States and England. I, my okay. question this, is, this is does, this, does this specific legislation presume the existence of freedom of movement, or does it presume no existence, no freedom of movement? That's my question. It's a it's a good question. I don't know. I don't know the answer. I cannot shoot from the from the from the hip. I am just presenting this legislation. And then you can object to it based on whether the presumptions is not acceptable to you. Let's have the Palestinian parliament members please vote. Okay, uh, publish the vote. 100% of the Palestinian parliament members voted yes. Let's have the Israeli parliament members please vote. Let's publish the vote. 75% of the Israeli parliament members voted yes. Let's go to the Hamas leader. Mr. Hamas leader, are you going to veto this legislation? Um, Hamas leader. But, yeah, I, no need to veto it. Um, it is a little redundant, but uh, I mean, this part of the, but because of free movement anyway. But are you going to veto this legislation? No. Veto it or agree to it? I'm, uh, do I'm, you agree I, with it? Yes, I'm agree with, I agree okay, with it. Okay, let's have the uh, uh, PA. Uh, are you a PA leader? Are you going to veto this legislation? No. Let's go to the Israeli Prime Minister. Mr. Prime Minister, are you going to veto this legislation? No. Okay. Terrific. 
All right, so let's go to the next. Let's have the post simulation survey. After participating in the simulation, do you support a common government for the people of Israel, the West Bank and Gaza that will coexist with the Israeli and Palestinian problem? Please vote, everyone vote now, everyone, Israeli, Palestinians, um, Professor Falk, everyone, please vote on this. Okay, let's give it a little bit more time. Okay, let's publish the vote. 90% of the audience voted yes, 10% voted no. When we started, 76% voted yes. We went up to 90%. Uh, 24% voted no at the beginning. Now it's down to 10%. So I think we are doing really well. I am going to be asking now a question. A, we want to, uh, to engage in social media and we want to have people just like you. Well, I'm not asking you to, to each one of you to do it, but I'm asking for volunteers. Are you willing to right now say on the record right here in, in front of this, uh, which we will, uh, we will uh, uh, put on social media, but each one of you, if you are, I'm not, I'm putting a little bit of pressure on you, but you don't have to do it. Are you willing to say in front of the, in, uh, in this Zoom, the following, I, uh, my name is, Joseph Avasar, I support a common government for the for Israel and Palestine to make peace. Are you willing? Are you willing to say that uh, right now? Uh, I would appreciate that. You don't have to. You don't have to do it. But it would be nice if I get volunteers who will actually say that. Is there anyone who is willing to say what your name and the Whatever you want to say, I support a common government. And we will put that on social media. So, so if you are afraid of social media, if you're afraid, then do we have a volunteer who would say that? Shlomo, sure. could you? Yes. Please? Yeah, go ahead. Shlomo. Say your, name, say your name and then whatever you want to say, I support a common government. This is uh, Shlomo Or, yes, I support the common, the common government and peace and justice for all, yes. Need to say it a little louder. <laughs> <laughs> we need to have a good, a good recording of it. I, Shlomo, I am... I, Shlomo, support this uh, common government, the Palestinians and Israel, and support peace and justice for all and stop the bloodshed and greed. Thank you so much, Lomo. Any other volunteers? Do we have a read, reader one? Libby. I, Libby Traubman, absolutely. Oh, hold on, I don't see, I don't see. Okay, go ahead. I'm Libby Traubman, and I absolutely agree that we need a common government that serves all the people in Israel, Palestine, the West Bank, we're all interrelated, interconnected, and interdependent, and we can't function as separate entities. We are one. Thank you so much. Any others volunteers? I volunteer. You do? Yeah, this is Charles. Um, my name is Charles Fredericks. I support a common government for uh, Israel and Palestine to achieve justice for everyone. And peace. And peace. Thank you. <laughs> okay, do we have Judith? You did you raise your hand or you have you to, need unmute. to unmute? Judith, you need to unmute. Okay, yes, thank you. I, I'm Judith Paulson and I do support a common government with peace and justice for all and a Bill of Rights for Human Rights that would be in their constitution. Thank you. Any other? Reader one. 
Go ahead. Hi, my name is Ridwan Kreinstein. I support a common government between the river and the sea with equality for Jews, Christians, Muslims, atheists, and agnostics. E equality for all before the law, irrespective of differences in class, gender, ethnicity, and religion. We can see where the country is at at this very moment. And that is why this initiative by the IPC is so important. It is not the full answer. It is not the only answer, but it points to where the answers might lie. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, let's go to question and answer now for, oh, is Jay? Jay, do you want to say something? Do you want to? Jay? Oh, and Olivia, oh. No, I did not have anything. Okay, Olivia, do you want to? Yes, but I'm trying, <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Joseph, I'm trying to. You muted yourself, Olivia. Is that okay? Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Hello. Yes. My name is Olivia Southwood. <coughs> I do, of course, support a common government uh, and I support peace and justice for everybody, all religions. Yes, I most certainly do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's go to please uh, now lower your hand unless you, and we'll start having questions for. Uh, Sorry, I can't lower my hand. How do I do that, Joseph? <laughs> um, I can't. Well, yeah. Right. Okay. Let's have. Oh, good. Thank okay. you, Dan. Thank you. We're going now to questions and answer with Professor Falk. Uh, does anyone have question? Let's have Jay. Do you have a question? My Jay. only question to Mr. Falk was, what city does he live in in California? Uh, Santa Barbara. Oh, we're neighbors. I'm in Santa Monica. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> good. Jay, Jay Hyman. Do you okay. have a question? Charles, you have a question? Uh, yes, actually, I do. Um, okay, so then it's, it's Charles and then Sean. Okay. Um, I think, I think the, uh, the problem that a lot of people have with the concept of the IPC is they're looking for, they, they reject the current situation and they're looking for justice to be established before anything else can happen. The, the, uh, the issue is that the current situation exists with the power differential as they are, maintained as they are. And to, to move that needle, I think one needs to start basically realistically uh, where things are. And from there, seek a method that cannot be um, cannot be corralled by the current circumstance. Everything, everything that's been done so far has been able to be negated by the power of the Israeli government, but there is a soft power that they cannot control. This is what this is trying to establish. And I, I would like your reaction to that, to think if observing it this way, that uh, the soft power can be used to actually undermine the existing hard power of the respective parties in their current position, if you don't see it as more realistic, if you will. No, I, I think that's a uh, highly coherent and uh, important uh, reflection and uh, justification for this uh, uh, IPC undertaking. Uh, my feeling, though, is that uh, with the uh, experience we've had with uh, decolonization and with uh, struggles against apartheid in South Africa and elsewhere, it need, such a positive initiative needs to be preceded by the stronger party <clears throat> showing a willingness to take initiatives in the 
a, a more peaceful direction. And that won't happen until Israel is placed under uh, mounting uh, global solidarity pressures. Uh, in other words, I don't see this soft power as having enough uh, resonance to be a factor in moving in in moving the needle to use your metaphor and and therefore uh i i'm not i'm rather skeptical but would if if we have five million people actually voting wouldn't that actually create the pressure uh i don't think so see one of the problems is that the uh constituency of uh, the IPC that's represented, for instance, this morning here uh, is uh, not reflective of the constituencies in the three uh, contested areas, Israel, Gaza, and the West Bank. And therefore, it, it creates a kind of false impression of reasonableness and and i don't think that that will uh make an a sufficient impact on what uh the real political actors are prepared to do and what they think is effective see one has to balance something like this against a camp uh, against the bds campaign for instance my view is that Israel will not change unless it's brought under uh, credible pressure from the international community. The, and the therefore, parliament, the parliament I favor a different way of proceeding. The parliament that we are proposing and the voters will be in Israel, the West Bank and Gaza. Uh, so I... I I, no, I but the people here, the people that you've gathered, Joseph, are not representative of the people in these constituencies, particularly the Israeli. No, I agree. I agree. I, I I fully agree. But are you saying I am I am asking you if to assume that five million people have voted? I'm not asking you that these people here on the Zoom voted. I'm asking you that to assume that 5 million people in Israel-Palestine voted. Wouldn't that create tremendous amount of pressure on the yeah. Israeli and the Palestinians? If that assumption is at all uh, consonant with the prospect for that happening, if a vote was to be taken. See, I think there's a misleading uh, dimension because uh, what you're projecting is a certain kind of residual reasonableness uh, but the recent elections in israel show that that's not the prevalent view and and a vote uh, on these kind of uh, provisions the led proposed legislation would never uh, achieve the kind of support that you're projecting okay so you you are you are challenging the assumptions and i am asking you if you accept those assumptions, you're, you're saying that the what we have now is the elections in Israel. The elections in Israel are within the concept of a Jewish state. We never had an election for the entire area. We never had that before. And to compare that to current elections under Israeli uh, law under restricting Palestinians <laughs> from voting, it doesn't make sense. But the whole trend is just in the opposite direction from what you hope for and work for. And therefore, one has to uh, oppose that trend as part of a a realistic approach to achieving peace and justice for the three areas and the two peoples. Uh, I just don't think uh, this is the uh, a fruitful way of 
contemplating how one moves from the present unsatisfactory situation to a better situation. I feel more it, it operates as a kind of smokescreen for Israel to continue with its expansionist and uh, essentially racist policies. Would you, would you recommend that we abandon <clears throat> our Joseph, there's to other people the waiting to ask questions. And... Are you dominating that? Oh. Yeah, Richard, Ori Or has been trying to get attention for a long time now. I suggest you give him the floor. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, well, we, I said at the beginning that we will have a, 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 a discussion and then we'll open for question and answer. All right, let's go to Sean. Uh, go to Ori Or, please. He's been waiting for a long see him. time. I don't see him as raising his hands. Well, he has. He's waving his hands. Oh. He, he hasn't used the electronic method to wait, raise his hand. He's just been yeah. raising his hand. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. That's fine. So we'll go to all. You, you click on the bottom under reactions. The very bottom says reactions. You it's click okay. on that and then you click on the raise your hand. Okay, let me, Ori or Sean, John, Mona. There, he's got it now. <laughs> okay, you you all, or most of you, voted for an unrealistic, uh, unrealistic uh, possibility. I, myself, I'm not for this possibility. I'm, I'm for the two-state solution only, and not one, one, one state solution. One state solution will not work for sure. That's it. Uh. Joseph, you're muted. Well, the two-state solution has been attempted since uh, 1947, and you and you say that's the only solution that you accept. That you and and why is it why? And it the, the common one government. State, we we are state saying solution will not won't work. I know. I am Israeli. I live here. I know Israel. I know the, the people of Israel. It won't work. And it, it's, it's very, very risky. Very risky. Okay. Let's go to, um, to uh, Sean, and then John, and then Mona, and then Judith, and then uh, Shalag. Uh, hi, I just have a question for Richard Falk. Uh, Richard Falk, I heard that you've been uh, banded to travel to Israel because you were a human rights or uh, an international lawyer, and uh, for some reason you are not allowed to go to Israel. And uh, I, I heard a lot of uh, some other uh, politician too couldn't be able to travel to Israel. Is there something that Israel doesn't like people to come over or uh, uh, evaluate Israel, or what, 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 why did why did they ban you? Uh, well, of course, they, they don't give their real reasons. They uh, accused me of a uh, kind of bias because I had written critically of Israel's uh, policies in the past, uh, prior to my appointment by the UN. And I had um, uh, been uh, active in supporting some uh, peace initiatives which uh, Israel viewed as uh, interferences with their uh, conception of security in the state. But uh, uh, they've taken the view that uh, sharp criticism amounts to anti-Semitism. Right. And that's the uh, essence of their uh, justification for uh, banning people, expelling them, punishing them in various ways, informally and formally. And well, it seems to me to be a very damaging thing to do from a Jewish point of view, because it uh, associates anti-Semitism 
with objection to a political program and project rather than with a hatred of a distinct Jewish ethnicity, which most of the critics of Israel uh, deny and do not in any way possess. In my case, I am Jewish and proud of that fact, uh, but I don't subscribe to the way in which Israel and Zionism has been behaving with regard to the Palestinian people. With, with that being said, you know, uh, it wasn't just you who are banded, because I know Neam Chomsky and Norman Finkelstein, yes. they're, they're also banded too. So with that being said, do you think Joseph and, and uh, us, uh, or if Joseph ever travels to Israel, he would be banned because he's considered some some sort of threat that he puts to Israel that they will ban him too? You know, because he is putting like a proposal of a common government. I, I don't think uh, Israel will take that lightly and they will uh, say they don't want this uh, to come into their country. Uh, I think this... I think I think if uh, Joseph tried to go to Israel and is banned, it would be a great boost for his efforts. It would show that Israel was taking them seriously. They don't ban people that they're uh, not concerned about uh, their uh, impact. Uh, the Norman Finkelstein and Noam Chomsky have uh, a large following, and they uh, typify Jews who oppose what Zionism and Israel have been doing. And it's that kind of uh, person that is excluded. It's not, and, and therefore, if IPC is perceived as a threat to the status quo, you can be sure Joseph would be banned. So I would urge him to test the strength of his initiative by uh, visiting Israel at the earliest opportunity. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm planning to do that. Good. Uh, Good luck. Okay, uh, let's thank, go, thank you. Let, let's go to John, and then after John is Mona. Richard, um, given your adherence to international law, um, do you think that the International Court of Justice and the International Criminal Court, effectively ineffective given Israel's infraction of international law? Do, do I think that, I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't get the essence of what you were asking. Do, do, given, Given Israel's infraction of international law, don't you think the uh, the power of the International Court of Justice and the International Criminal Court are totally ineffective given Israel's infraction of international law? Uh, yes, I, I think they're ineffective, but part of their ineffectiveness relates to uh, Israel's defiance and the U.S. and to some extent the EU's support of Israel insulating it from accountability to international law. Without that geopolitical protection, I don't believe Israel could have maintained this uh, defiant posture toward uh, uh, fulfilling obligations as uh, determined by a authoritative and non-biased international judicial institutions. Okay, thank you. All right, Mona. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, it's an honor to have you with us, uh, Professor Falk. Um, the the it seems that the Israeli government has increasingly not only barred external actors, Jewish or otherwise, including all human rights investigations by the UN of entering in order to conduct their investigations, but they're also now more recently criminalizing human rights monitoring and human rights advocacy by Israelis within Israel. 
um, recent actions against Bachelam and other human rights organizations. But these excesses and the increasing extremism of the Israeli coalition governments, most importantly, the current one, and the recent protests in Israel seem to indicate that there may be a silver lining for this kind of uh, move to this far, far extreme where they're, they're actually legislating patently racist legislation and patently, um, I would say, anti-Jewish in the sense that it, it betrays the Jewish uh, uh, nature of the beacon that, that Israel was supposed to be. Um, so could there be a silver lining? And this is the question. Could there be a silver lining in that their extremism may actually finally reawaken the, the peace movement within Israel? And the recent demonstrations um, seem to indicate that there is a aversion, a repulsion to these extremist uh, ideological legislations and activities of the government. And maybe finally, we can once again, as we saw in the 80s and 90s, a very strong peace movement within the Israeli public. Well, you've articulated very well uh, my own hope uh, that this kind of silver lining will materialize. It's too early to say, and I would say it's not only a hope for a peace movement uh, in uh, Israel itself, but among uh, diaspora Jews and also uh, in the global south the awakening of people to the injustices that have been endured by the Palestinians as refugees and as occupied people for too many decades. It's, it's the kind of dynamic that eventually led to the transformation of South Africa, which no one, I was there a few years before Nelson Mandela was released from prison, and no one expected that outcome at that time. But the combination of internal resistance and external solidarity, but, which was responsive to the excesses of South African apartheid, led the elites, in the white elites in South Africa to recalculate their interests. They didn't have a moral reawakening. They had a pragmatic realization that they would be better off in a multi-ethnic constitutional order, treating people equally, regardless of their race. And that, that it's a perfect illustration of Joseph's prescription for something that is not perfect, but much better than the alternatives. And my hope is that such a process will unfold in relation to Israel. Great. Can you have a follow up, Mona? Uh, if, 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 if there's no objection, um, I'm, I'm very glad that you see that as a realistic or at least viable hope. Um, because the, the flip side of that, um, as you said, that the people outside in the diaspora are also waking up, that the more the Netanyahu's of the world equate legitimate criticism of illegitimate policies by the state of Israel. Um, uh, and that's without prejudice to equal condemnation of bad actions on the other side. I'm not in any way immunizing the other side from their mistakes, but that by equating anti-Semitism with anti uh, critique of anti uh, uh, illegitimate Israeli policy, it's actually creating greater danger for Jews in the diaspora because you're leaving those who have legitimate complaints about policy no choice but to assume the mantle of that criticism in order to be able to uh, raise the rule of international law and raise the actual assumptions and values of the intended <coughs> Jewish state. Uh, so this, it, it should wake up the Jews in the diaspora as well, as you rightly noted, to put a stop to the misuse of, of, of that mantle in order to preserve and to shine a light on true anti-Semitism, of which there is plenty of in the world, especially growing in the US with the right-wing movements there. So there's that danger, and hopefully that danger will also drive you know, the, the, the need to come back to a, a much more um, rule of law-based and, and humanitarian and human rights-based solution forward. I agree completely with what you said. Okay, great, let's go to Judith and then to Baruch Shalev. 
Judith, you need to unmute, please. You put me on the list, Joseph. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, you are on the list. Uh, you okay. are after Baruch, and then Arya, and then Charles, and then Clark. Clark, I don't remember what you said your name was, so I wrote you as Clark, and then Shlomo Orr. Okay. Are you ready? Yes, Judith. Okay. Um, uh, Dr. Falk, or, uh, I would like for you to tell us uh, what could the ICC do to, to uh, encourage, to make a, a, an authoritarian government stop. I know that you say US, the US is um, keeping anything good from happening coming out of the IS, ICC. But um, if it did have freedom to act and does it have any arrest powers? And can they, can they uh, take out a government that you know just arrest the leaders of, of, of a, an authoritarian government before they are responsible for killing millions of people? Because <laughs> it seems like there ought to be some entity that can do this. Um, so I just would like your, if you can help me with this, is it just a, a completely irrational um, prospect? But to me, that's, that's very much needed. Um, no, I, I completely agree that it's very much needed, but in the world that we live in, it's really a world that is state-centric, and it's very difficult to challenge what happens internally in any state, particularly a state that enjoys the sort of geopolitical protection that Israel enjoys as a result of its relationship with the US primarily, but secondarily the EU. So long as that condition exists, it's uh, very difficult to penetrate uh, what has been happening. And as the Zionist project has uh, unfolded, its ambitions have grown and it now envisions uh, a one-state Israeli solution. And I think this present government uh, in Israel is committed to that kind of future. <clears throat> Unfortunately, initiatives like the IPC, although uh, well idealistically motivated and uh, even pragmatically sensible, do not have the kind of political traction necessary to achieve the kind of changes that they hope and fervently hope and work to achieve. But that doesn't mean that they shouldn't keep trying. Right. Because lots of things that seem uh, unlikely or even impossible have happened in the course of our lifetimes. And so I sometimes try mm. to say we have to commit ourselves to the politics of impossibility. Thank you, yes. Thank yes. you, thank you so much. <laughs> All right, let's go to uh, Baruch Shalev, and then Olivia, and then Ari, and then Charles, and then Clark, and then Shlomo. <laughs> Quite a list. Uh, okay, Professor Fark, thank you. And it's a joy to listen to someone who so much understands Israel, the way we see it from inside. But there are some changes, and one fact that I want to point out, that actually, yes, Netanyahu became the prime minister, but with words, it's a difference of maybe 1,000 words out of, in a country of 9 million people. It's because of the way of the system that one party fell out. So all the votes of that party, most were divided and most of it went to the right. So it's technical, the country is divided to half half. And in fact, the demonstrations that were last night, for example, if I compare it to the big demonstration in Washington in 1967, near the Lincoln statue, the size of last night in Israel it's at least three times bigger the demonstration, maybe five times, if if you compare it to the size, the population of the states. There were 100,000 people in Washington, let's say, and we I, we reached 
We, 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 reach, we are reaching incredible numbers in terrible rain last night. So there is a voice from Israel. We are 50-50. We cannot change the system. In fact, the way things are now, Netanyahu is going with the extreme right, with, with, the, with the mentee of uh, the Rabbi Kahana, and et cetera. So we, can, we have enough voice to say that we do need help and it's justified. And Israel is not only the savior of the balance, Israel is also at the moment the support to some the, uh, dictatorships. We are an international power and you decide in the States and the Jewish community whether it's in the right direction or not. Without you, and another thing that you, I, I enjoy to listen to your voice and, and way of speaking, but you, if you spend time here, you know that talking in this talk or when, when, when President Biden on a European leader says something politely, you understand that it's clearly don't do this, but we don't even hear it in our, with our, with the Israeli ears. You cannot hear such a soft voice. It's unclear. So they start to explain it here now, all the explanation, as if in, the, in all the media, which is controlled, we say the opposite hints as if it were given even in Paris yesterday. So you have to realize it, that if you want to say something, speak to us in Hebrew, or not in Hebrew, but in this time, because we are already, we cannot listen to, to a very, to an unclear message. It just goes above our head. Really, truly, genuinely, no. I'm telling you. No, no I think so. <laughs> you spoke with uh, wisdom and knowledge and experience, and I accept what you said. Um, I think that it's very difficult for people like myself to adopt a, uh, a strategy of communication that is not something within our comfort zone and uh, and therefore uh it's up to others i think to uh be the firebrands that uh, manage to communicate a stronger message that will be heard and possibly uh have enough resonance to change the situation. As we've noted, though, the stronger the uh, criticisms from outside that come toward Israel, the more uh, likely even leaders like Netanyahu, much less the religious Zionism to the right of him, they will uh, castigate that as pure anti-Semitism. They called the International Criminal Court's decision to investigate Israel for alleged war crimes in the period of 2014 to the uh, 2020, I think. Uh, and they called that pure anti-Semitism. And this was a carefully professional conclusion on the basis of highly uh, technical uh, considerations as to what the jurisdiction of the ICC was in fact. So I think one needs to have a message that is expressed in deeds as well as words. And therefore I would favor uh, boycotts and other ways of signaling to Israel that its behavior is unacceptable all right I, I apologize i apologize i have a vo one word to you also you're very important yeah uh, no problem. I, I apologize i i apologize for don't please don't misunderstand me i don't want you to change your tone i, I what i mean is actually and you are i agree with you you have to use the stick and the carrot but when one talks to the cabinet ministers and to the media that's coming to the people, it's what I what Tichnat Han calls uh, call things by their true name. 
you can say it softly, but call things by your true name. And uh, so we have to call, we, we have to call the appearances that happen in their true name. That's all. And embrace, of course, we need embracement just as much as they seek. Sure. And actually, also what you said, yes, uh, yourself, when you come here, it's, it's okay if they perceive you as big, that's okay, because, because what you bring in, it's a change of consciousness. And I truly believe that at the moment, we are not ready. We, we don't have enough common decency to be able to have one state. We 100% control everything, fully, not only militarily, but in many ways. And that's the reality. So thank you, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> um, Professor um, Falk, uh, there are a lot of people asking uh, to ask you questions. Is that okay? Are you? Uh, I'm, uh, yes, but maybe 10 minutes more. Okay. Let's go to, so keep your questions short because we have Olivia, Arya, Charles, Clark and Shlomo, and then Sean wants to ask a question again. So, Olivia. Thank you. Can you hear me okay, Joseph? Can yes. you hear me okay? Thank yes. you very much indeed, Professor Falk. We are greatly honored to have you. And thank you for thank you. Uh, spending time with us. Um, you don't uh, reward your teenage child for bad behavior by giving him money on a Saturday night to go out and have a pizza with his friends and have a great time. If you do that, he'll continue with his bad behavior. Right, the US, mainly the US and the EU have been rewarding Israel for the last, for, for, for many, many years for their appalling behavior. So do they really expect Israel to change? No, Israel just gets worse and worse. So unless, look, just look at the support they get from the US. And I think Biden is a, is a very pro, Israeli uh, president. They get military, political, diplomatic, financial support, immense support from the US with no conditions attached. They get immense support from, from the UK and from other and from France and from Greece and from many other EU countries. So what incentive is there for Israel to change its nasty ways and to comply with international law? Um, that's my number one uh, uh, view of the situation. My number two is more religious. Now, uh, I please, remember as a child. Please keep your questions short. We have short well, it's time. Very, it's very, very, many, many it's very, very short. Ask. It's anecdotal. It's very short. As a young child, I remember asking my grandmother, uh, perhaps I was eight or ten, uh, say, well, what does Israel light on to nations mean, Granny? And she wasn't Jewish, neither were any of us. But she was very interested in other religions. And she said, oh, look, it's lovely, really. It means that Israelis could go out and teach, were designated to go out and teach right and wrong and good and bad. And she, she went on. And I, I, that, that turns out in my mind. Now, fast forward decades and decades and decades. I'm an old lady. Um, uh, uh, what the Israeli, and I think, I know, I think you're a sort of rather secular Jew. I, I may be wrong. I've listened to lots of what you say and I identify with, with all of what you say, actually. Absolutely all of you, all of what you say. Uh, there are religious, there are Jewish people that perhaps have a greater religious sentiment than yourself. I think as far as yourself is concerned, it's more to do with ancestry and perhaps culture. I, I, I may be wrong. Right, the, the behavior of the Jewish government uh, for many Jewish people, whether inside or outside Israel, is that not a stain on the Jewish religion? They are my two questions to you, Professor. Thank well, you. Well, uh, the, the, uh, because time is short, I can't give the kind of answer that your questions and comments deserve. Yes, it is a stain. And for uh, a variety of reasons, it really undermines the uh, fundamental uh, Jewish tradition of alignment with the search for justice in the world and it uh, it reminds me of the uh, line in a poem right, by oh, that's cute. Oh. <laughs> w h auden which says uh, those to whom evil is done do evil in return 
And I'm afraid Israel has fallen into that trap, or at least Zionism and the dominant tendencies in Israel has fallen into that trap of reproducing the suffering that they have, that Jews have themselves endured for a long time. And uh, I also uh, share your view of uh, Israel having no incentive to alter its policies so long as it enjoys this level of geopolitical subsidy and protection. And uh, you stated that very well. All right, let's go to Ari, Ari Kakowitz. Yes. Uh, Professor Ford, Richard, it's so good to see you. <laughs> uh, it's always a pleasure listening to you, although there are some disagreements, you know, I'm a proud Zionist, but I have two short comments and a point question for you. One is in just two hours, including you, I think we are always confused between reality and fiction. Because <laughs> the, the confederation is a fiction and you were referring to reality. And the second point is that, and you might comment on that, there is also confusion between federation and confederation. But my point question to you, so then what is the solution, Richard, to this conflict in a nutshell? Well, well Thanks. Uh, uh, just a, 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 the, you're correct that there is this difference between fiction and reality, but there is also the need for a plausible connection between fiction and reality. Otherwise, the fiction isn't worth reading. Uh, as, and that's what my... Uh, skepticism, if you want to call it that, uh, was directed at articulating, making a more plausible connection with the fiction of IPC and the reality on the ground in Israel, Palestine. Uh, I'm not smart enough to devise a solution uh, that but that doesn't mean that there won't be one forthcoming. And that's why I say, uh, do what you believe in and trust in the politics of impossibility. In other words, uh, things happen. The Soviet system imploded. No one expected that. And no one expected the collapse of uh, South African apartheid without a bloody war. So we should uh, have confidence in our commitments and uh, act as uh, boldly as we can to make them become really politically political projects. And one way of putting the my skepticism uh, to Joseph above all is what would the IPC have to do to become a viable political project. See, I, th I think it would be very valuable for all of you to uh, have a discussion of that issue. And maybe uh, Joseph's response would be, it's already a uh, practical political project. And, th and that's where, uh, the zone of disagreement would probably come. All right, let's go to Charles and then Clark and then Shlomo and then Sean. Uh, thank you so much for participating. This has been very uh, enlightening and enjoyable. I would, uh, in terms of regarding the uh, functionality or not, potential functionality of a concept like the IPC, I would like to point out a few things about the present reality, which everyone has similarly tried to say uh, the IPC is not reflective of. And that is, uh, well, the, due to the recent incursions into the West Bank, the PLO has ended security cooperation with the state of Israel. And um, the uh, two state, one state apartheid state uh, conundrum that Israel finds itself in trying to control an equal number population to their own population within the state of Israel over which they hold total economic and military control is, uh, you know, it's, you can't call it democracy. I don't 
care of how you want to term it, but it's obviously not that. Now this leaves the people in uh, the Palestinian and the Israeli people who uh, do not want to be thrust forward into a total autocratic system with nowhere to go. They have no, uh, they have no framework, legalistic framework with which to cooperate with each other. The uh, Israeli uh, government depends upon making this hard and fast separation. So the other thing that, that I just like to point out is the IPC shouldn't be viewed in separation of other potential efforts, like the whole world is not existing at the same time. Um, obviously, the United Nations, the International Criminal Court, uh, the Charles, keep it short. We have uh, okay, more the people want to ask questions. Okay, the potential of citizens in any country like the U U.S. and Western Europe to change the policies of their own government is part of their responsibility. But these things will operate. Uh, collectively. So the IPC is something that in, in answer to someone's question, what can be done? Obviously, participation within uh, is Israel and Palestine itself in something like the IPC. That's so I wonder are you asking it, question or are you trying to convince Professor? Well, I, I, I'm just <laughs> asking <laughs> if, if anything like that makes sense in terms of like makes more sense, at least in sense of uh, regarding the IPC as something that could be functional. Uh, a short answer is uh, yes, I think it's um, probably uh, more plausible at this stage, but that doesn't mean that the IPC shouldn't continue to evolve according to its own principles. The two things are not inconsistent. Right. Exactly. And, and nobody knows enough at this stage to know what will work, you know, what will change this uh, toxic uh, equation of power and uh, abuse that has uh, been uh, intensifying over the years and took a giant leap in the wrong direction in these Israeli elections, which truly, which I, I agree with the earlier speaker who said that the victory is deceptive in the sense of not reflecting the division in Israel itself, at the same time, that's the system that has been constitutionally or uh, it's the fr legal framework within which all Israeli governments have been chosen. So, and Israel has lived with that framework now that's for uh, since its inception. It's like complaining that uh, uh, Trump didn't really win in 2016 because he lost the popular vote in the US. But the system for selecting a leader is based on the electoral college. However outmoded that may seem to many of us, that's the way uh, political competition is conducted within this country and that's the way it will continue to be conducted for the foreseeable future i believe in israel all right let's go to clark in uh, the, the british solicitor clark okay let's go to shlomo shlomo please all right Okay, so quickly, uh, so given that equating anti-criticism -criti of Israel with anti-Semitism, meaning anti, so criticizing Israel becomes anti-Israel, becomes anti-Semitism and all of that, and um, which is very big danger for the Jews, and hopefully they will recognize it. Now, given all of that, I'm wondering what you think if you have any sort of why the United States allows Israel to go that far? Why do they allow Nazis in the Israeli government? Why they support it? 
what 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 is the real purpose of the U what is the interest of the US in the whole chess game here? Are they going to why are they giving Israel enough rope to hang itself on? And is it do you need do they need the mercenaries to fight for them? Uh, Iran? Is that the purpose? What what do you think? Do you have any suspicion of this kind? Uh, well, I think it's it's a fair and a very significant uh, question. I think on the most fundamental level, the U.S. attitude toward Israel changed with the outcome of the 1967 war. And at that point, instead of being a strategic burden in the region, uh, Israel became a strategic partner and asset. And, and uh, that was coupled with the fall of the Shah of Iran, who had been the principal ally of the United States previously, and the replacement of the Shah by an anti-Western, anti-US government. So that's the big... The, the other part of the story is domestic, that Israel is, has very well-funded and organized uh, lobby groups that are not uh, balanced by comparable uh, pressure groups on the Palestinian side. And so from the point of view of political leaders, they have nothing much to gain by taking a balanced point of view, and they have a lot to lose. They lose donations, and they may even engender uh, active opposition. Uh, and and uh, opposition uh, from well-funded uh, opponents. So uh, American politics, as we've seen with gun control and other issues, is very um, deceptively misleading as far as public uh, preferences are concerned, where all the organized influences uh, concentrated on one side of the argument, and the the other side is underfunded, underrepresented. And I'm afraid that's the situation confronting any change. There's no incentive for Biden to be balanced or to uh, utter criticisms of the Israeli policies. There's nothing he can gain, and he goes out of his way, I think, to, uh, to do to sort of nurture this sense of being uh, more Zionist than the Zionists. Uh, he calls himself a uh, a, a non a non Jewish Zionist, and uh, you know that's uh, a, an unfortunate development in American political life. All right, let's go to Sean and then Len, and then we are, and then we'll let, we'll take you and let you go finally. <laughs> All right, let's go to Sean and then Len. Okay, uh, Richard, just the one more thing I want to mention, and uh, a lot of people were discussing about uh, the two-state solution and the one-state solution, but unfortunately, I don't think, I don't see any vision in that in the future, because frankly, over the decades, the uh, there hasn't been a Palestinian state that I don't think any Israeli would give a Palestinian state. Mm -hmm. And the only one that I know that was generous uh, for the Palestinian people, uh, even though I'm not a fan of that guy, is the uh, that Prime Minister Yitzhak Rabin, who uh, who actually offered uh, Oslo Accord to the Palestinian to recognize Palestinian as a as an entity, not a state, because no Israeli uh, Prime Minister gave uh, gave his uh, Palestinian their state. Of, and the only generous guy, like I said, was the Yitzhak Rabin because he's the only one that gave them Oslo Accord and uh, gave them, uh, he, he himself, uh, Yitzhak Rabin, didn't want a Palestinian state, but the only thing he did was give them an entity. That was the only generous thing the prime minister gave the Palestinian. It was an entity to represent the Palestinian, but not a state. So I, in my opinion, I think this was the only generous thing that uh, Israel gave to the Palestinian people, but I don't think it's going to go more than that. And I, I don't know, maybe in the future I could be wrong. But... You think this is the best uh, they can do with the Israeli and the, 
And this is why I believe IPC is uh, the much better solution for the term, because I don't think this is going to go any further with this conflict they have. What, what do you think? Uh, well, first of all, I think there uh, is a one state solution, but it's an Israeli state. Uh, I mean, that's a, a, a viable, it's not a solution, but it's an imposed outcome that is existentially very relevant at the present time. And if you were forecasting the future, it's the more likely uh, outcome, uh, at, at least oh, yeah. uh, that's on the horizon. Uh, but... Uh, I agree with you that, and I, I would refrain from referring to Rabin's uh, uh, initiative as quote unquote generous. Uh, Israel was very effective in keeping out of the Oslo framework, Palestinian right of self-determination, for instance, which was is the essential uh, quest of the Palestinian people to have self-determination in what seemed to be until uh, after World War II, the Palestinian homeland. The Palestinian people, you have to remember, have been uh, dispossessed from their own homeland. And uh, the, the present Israeli claim is to exercise exclusive rights of self-determination within that homeland. That's, uh, from any Palestinian point of view, an intolerable way of envisioning the future. And even though, uh, as you say, Rabin was uh, somewhat more forthcoming, or one can say he handled public relations in a more uh, yes. uh, effective way we have to remember he was assassinated yes and, uh, that's that's the, what that would happen because of what his uh, proposal to the Palestinian and what his uh, approach was and then that's what got him assassinated by a, a right wing extremist uh, Zionist like well, well not maybe not extremist but a right wing uh, but, but that right wing extremism now represents the elected uh, emb embodiment of Israel's uh, majority sentiment as expressed in these elections, however flawed you may view them from a, a democratic technical point of view. So what I'm really suggesting is that all along the Zionist project has not envisioned a, a political compromise that reflects any kind of uh, sense of equal justice and uh, democratic constitutionalism. All right, let's go to Lenny. Okay, uh, Richard, I've, I've read your work before and uh, I was interested in listening to what you had to say and you didn't dis disappoint me. Uh, and I can understand why Israel doesn't let you in. But uh, I, have a I have a question. First of all, Israel is 20% Arab. Israel is listed as the ninth happiest country in the world. The Economist just said that Israel's democracy has slid recently but its democracy is still shown as superior to the American. Now, Israel, from my perspective, but the Jews have been happy to share the land with the Arabs who were not called Palestinians in 19, 1948. In 1947, when the UN suggested Israel split the land with the Arabs, uh, I'm sure Haj Amin al Husseini, who was a Nazi, uh, refused and started a war. The prosperity plan that uh, Trump put out a couple of years back, uh, the PA did not even respond. So I'm asking you, it's no question the UN is, is, has no, no uh, spine 
and low capacity to influence the, uh, the Arabs, including the Palestinian Authority. To me, uh, only the Arab League will get the Palestinians to the table. Now, Baal heard how bad Israel is. Now, I want to know what you think we can do to stop the Palestinian terrorism and to get them to the peace table. Well, uh, that's a, a difficult uh, assignment you give me. Uh, mm -hmm. First of all, uh, what incentive do they have to come to the table to talk with the government that's just been elected? And to what extent do, does one call any act of resistance on the part of a long oppressed people automatically terrorism? Uh, second only to the abuse of the idea of anti-Semitism is the polemical use by Israel of terrorism to justify uh, excessive force against any form of sustained Palestinian resistance. My, so my, country, my country calls it terrorism. I'm in Canada. My country calls Hamas a terrorist organization and the PA. So I'm well, not talking about Israel's point of view. Total nonsense, Ken, total nonsense. Uh, but uh, that, that doesn't change the issue. I mean, Israel certainly subscribes to that way of using terrorism to justify its reliance on excessive force. And that's the fundamental issue and they deny any kind of right of resistance to a people that have had their basic rights denied for uh, 75 years. Even the UN had no authority to impose a partition on a, a unified Palestinian entity uh, that had a majority Arab population that would have rejected partition, uh, as would almost any society, if given the opportunity for democratic choice. So there are many complexities that uh, complicate or, or obstruct the good faith pursuit of a peaceful future for the two peoples. And unless those complexities are uh, addressed, uh, there will be continuing frustration, cynicism, and the path of violence, domination, and exploitation will continue. All right. Thank you so much, Professor Falk. I know you have to go. Um, I, I have some um, closing remarks, but you don't need to stay for that. If you need to leave and take a break, go ahead. And, okay. uh, and I, I want to thank you. You're a true gentleman. Thank you so much. I know I know it uh, was difficult for you to, to participate in this exercise of uh, fiction or imagination. In my, in my opinion, the only real, real solution, but I'm very, very appreciative. Thank well, you thank, thank you. And I appreciate the questions were very challenging. And I did my best under the constraints of time to respond. But okay. I admire you for taking this kind of initiative. And maybe you, in decades to come, this will be a vindication of my advocacy of the politics of impossibility. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Dr. All right. Okay, <laughs> so you, you, you stay guys. Stay safe, Professor. Please stay. stay safe. I just Thank you. To... Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so I... Thank you. Thank you. I have some closing remarks that I would like to make.
All right. <clears throat> I want to re remind you that 90% of you voted in favor of a common government. That's a good start. Very, very good start. I think that an Israeli Palestinian government, it's clear they are unable to make peace. I believe that the only solution that we believe is democracy, democracy equal equality and equal peace. I'm, in, in the country of Estonia, nine and a half million people, population of nine and a half million people, 40% vote online. I think that this whole question of whether a common government is a good idea or not could be solved very, very easily by having the election. Then once we have the election, we will know if Palestinians and Israelis are voting, we will know whether the assumptions are correct or not. We need, if we truly want peace, if we truly want peace, then we should have the common election. I want to remind you that one day of war between Israel and Palestine and Gaza is a hundred million dollars. So why are we not so uh, skeptical of spending, wasting that money in one day, but we are so skeptical about having a common election? Perhaps we don't want it. I'm asking you, please write a letter to your um, paper or whoever you get your news from or um, trust. The letter should say, and I'll send it to you if, you if you send me an email. I participated in a peace simulation conducted by an organization called the Israeli Palestinian Confederation. They invite speakers to stress test their formula for peace. Notable people such as Dennis Ross, Peter, Bynard, Norm Chomsky, Alan Dershowitz, Cornell West, Gideon Levy, and Aaron Miller, David Aaron Miller, and now we can add Richard Falk, were some of the few who spoke at the events and praised it. The simulations are conducted twice a month on Zoom. I was very skeptical and joined the simulation out of curiosity. I must say that I was surprised. The organization has an intriguing approach to solving the conflict. I urge you to join one of the simulations and provide coverage. Their website is IP Confederation, where you could sign up for one of their future events. Very truly yours, and then you put your name. I would very much appreciate if you can write that letter. If, I know some of you have already sent me requests for the text, and um, I'll, I'll send it to you if you send me an email. I'll send you the text uh, and you can amend it or change it. So I am, um, I'm gonna turn it over now to Charles and because uh, Charles will be conducting uh, uh, more, more discussions, but I am going to take um, a break and I'll turn it over to Charles, but I am, I am leaving the Zoom right now, but you guys can stay and speak with, with Charles. Thank you so much, everyone.